one year ago that Ebenezer Scrooge was shown in a most unusual way. The misery of his miserly existence. During this past year, Scrooge has been better than his word. He has become a kind and generous soul. Yes, he has done it all, and infinitely more. You might say, he has seen the light. Hurry, he's going to be. I'm late! 
If I don't arrive at the office before Bob Cratchit, it will spoil everything. He'll be back. He forgot Bob Cratchit's Christmas present. Now, where did I put it? What would he do without me? Take number three scrambled, Jack number five, Buck today's special, and Tilly the three cheese omelet. Oh, with extra cheese. Extra cheese. <laughs> Got it. Oh, and Belle, can you bring another pot of coffee? Of course I can. Order up. For once, it would be nice if the ordered up came from some customers that paid up. Matthew 25? Matthew 25? It's a here that Matthew order numero tres. Matthew 25, 40. The Bible? Here we go. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did for me. Does it come before or after the verse that says, if someone doesn't work, there is no way they're going to eat? I'm just saying. Petra, hosting the Bridge Club Bible study gives me an opportunity to share my faith. Soon, faith is all you're going to have. They have scared what's left of our paying customers away. And another thing, do they really need to bring those shopping carts into the diner? They're afraid someone will steal them. Really? We don't have that kind of luck. Listen, thanks for sticking it out. I know I haven't paid you in a couple of months. A couple? Okay, four. Who is Condon? <sighs> I wouldn't blame you if you left. Hey, things will pick up around here. You think so? Well, they can't get any worse. Thanks. This is the prize property you wanted me to see? Think boutique condo. With a major capital investment, maybe. See? Things are looking up already. Customers that smell like cash, not... Petra! It can't be. I know it's been a while, but I know a customer when I see one. It's Tim. Tim? I went to high school with him. Oh, that Tim. You dumped him? Quiet! What were you thinking? We were just friends, that's all. What happened? Well, my dad told me... It doesn't matter. <laughs> of course. Why would your dad want you to date someone with money? He had his reasons. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What's merry about it? It's just an excuse to pick one's pockets every December 25th. Do you still like your coffee black, Tim? Bell? Hi. You two know each other? We did. Once. Coffee? Please. I'm Ronald, James. Hi, Ronald. I'm Bell. Welcome to the dinner, Bell. So you work here? <laughs> it's worse than that. I own it. <laughs> Bell? About that coffee? On my way. Sorry. Duty calls. I'll be right back. You didn't tell me you knew the owner. High school. High school? 
Actually, we almost dated. But like everything else, my father forbid it. It's too bad. It's for the best. It's not good to mix classes. And to think, all this could have been mine. <laughs> well, it soon will be anyway. <laughs> How ironic. Can I get you anything else? Just our food. Oh, with extra cheese. Yes, it will be up shortly. Who's your boyfriend, Belle? He isn't my boyfriend. Just a customer. I'm just a customer, and you never look at me that way. <laughs> just drink your coffee. Leave her alone, gang. Thank you, Matthew. When Belle's ready to give us the details on her romance, she oh. will. Oh, you're just as bad as the rest of them. Why don't you leave the pot? <sighs> Sorry for the interruption. Customers? It's the bridge club. Uh, they play cards here? Actually, they live under the 32nd Street Bridge, hence the name. <laughs> bridge club. Quaint. Ronald, make a note. This neighborhood is less than desirable. So what's going on? Belle, you said you own this place? Yes. My mother died when I was very young. I seem to recall that. Anyway, my dad and I have been working on it together. Well, up until about two years ago when he passed. I inherited the dinner bell, all lock, stock, and barrel. And the debt? Excuse me? The debt on this property. Upon your father's death, you inherited debt. Tim, why are you here? Well, like you, as the sole survivor, I too recently inherited my father's business. I'm so sorry for your loss. What loss? I got the business. Anyway, my company recently acquired the mortgage on a number of properties in the area. Really? Including this one. The dinner bell? What a coincidence. I guess we are sort of in business together. Ronald. Do you know what this is? You want me to finally sign your yearbook? <laughs> Miss. It is Miss, right? Yes. Miss Dickinson, you are eight months behind in your mortgage payments. I've been working with Mr. Brown at Main Street Bank. He's been so nice and helpful. We've even started up a plan. Mr. Brown and the Main Street Bank's mismanagement of the loan office is the reason why they no longer hold the mortgage on this property. You'll see in that document that you have until December 25th to be completely caught up in the loan payments or we will be forced to foreclose on this property. I see. Are you ready to order? Nothing, just coffee. Actually, yeah, I'll actually have the number three with... Nothing, thank you. Well then, that will be three dollars. So, what will they have? Everything. Huh? He holds our mortgage and wants to shut us down if I don't pay by Christmas. All right, here's the plan. You distract him and I secretly drop two scoops of red poison in his coffee. Petra! Laxative then? It won't kill him. It's just gonna give him a warning not to mess with the dinner bell. No, but granted, he is the most ill-mannered, rude, insolent, obnoxious- Belle. You might want to hold that thought. What? My change? You can add stingy, greedy, and cheap. It's on the house. Merry Christmas, Tim. If you insist. Some advice, Miss Dickinson. Transactions such as these and many more that I'm sure are made around here are the reason why the dinner bell will soon ring no more. I just wanted to, uh... Ronald? I apologize. Thank you for the coffee. Belle? 
Remember when he said things couldn't get any worse? Yeah. I think they just did. Oh, this is almost eight. I can't wait to see Bob's face. There he comes. Right on time. What a faithful and trusted bookkeeper. <laughs> oh, such a shame to have to fire him. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. You're late. Well, this fine timepiece you gave me says I am right on time. Are you calling me a liar, sir? No, no, I simply lost track of time, that's all. I went to buy this wreath to brighten up the offices of Scrooge and Marley for Christmas. Spending good money on such frivolity? Have I taught you nothing, Cratchit? There. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas? Every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Oh no. Oh no, what, Cratchit? Nothing, Mr. Scrooge. Speak up. It's just that I, it's all too good to be true, I guess. If you are referring to the foolish way I have been acting this past year, you are correct. I have been less than a perfect manager these past 12 months. No, no, Mr. Scrooge, not at all. You've been, you've been most excellent. You've been very generous. Bah humbug. Mr. Cratchit, I can no longer tolerate the current condition of this office. There need to be some changes. Changes? Yes. It is no longer suitable that you remain under my employ. I see. Well, I shall gather my things and be going then. What things? Everything here belongs to the business, does it not? I suppose it does, Mr. Scrooge. And the business belongs to who, Mr. Cratchit? It belongs to you, Mr. Scrooge. Yes, to me. <laughs> and to you, Bob. Pardon me? <laughs> you see, you are no longer under my employ because you are now my partner. Your partner? Yes, partner. It is all here. I have made you full partner in the firm of Scrooge and Marley. I, I mean, Scrooge and Cratchit. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Yes, 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 yes. Bob, uh, all that is left for you to do is to sign these two identical documents and the uh, yeah, quill, ink, Sign, yes, 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 and again, and quill, ink, and sign, that is it, Robert Cratchit. Well done, old man. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to show this to Emily and the children, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, it is Ebenezer. I don't know how to thank you, Ebenezer. To begin with, you could take off that wreath. You look ridiculous. <laughs> Right away. Ah, yes, a much more suitable place. <laughs> Bob, you should have seen your face. <laughs> Was I really that horrible a person? Oh yes, without question. Really? Yes, you were all that awful and more. You were the absolute worst. Yes, well, I... You were the bottom of the barrel. I remember you once telling me, I refuse to make myself merry at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. Yes, I... There was another time when you told yes, me... Yes, yes. <laughs> you have answered my question very well, Bob. <laughs> but that Ebenezer Scrooge is gone for good. To Scrooge and Cratchit. 
Long may we prosper by good and honorable means. God bless us, everyone. Yes. God bless us. Which reminds me, how old is that fine young son of yours? Tiny Tim, mm -hmm. very well, because of you. Emily and I can't thank you enough for covering the cost of the operation. Oh, it was the least I could do. It saved his life. Which reminds me, I have something for you as well. Oh, you shouldn't have. It's from Tim. From Tiny Tim? What, what is it? Open it. His little crutch. He no longer needs it. He's walking quite well on his own. It's a miracle. Oh my. There is a note as well. Oh. Dear Uncle Scrooge. Uncle. I, I like that. Dear Uncle Scrooge. At times in life, everyone needs a crutch. Thank you for being mine. God bless you, Tiny Tim. What a fine young lad. I shall treasure this as long as I live. Scrooge and Cratchit. But what about Mr. Marley? Oh, Jacob Marley has been dead these eight years. What will he care? It appears a storm is coming. Yes, quite. So, what is the first order of business for Scrooge and Cratchit? First, you are to take the rest of the day off. Oh, I couldn't possibly. There's far too much to do. The work will last. Christmas will not. Are you sure I shouldn't stay and help out? Go! Emily is making a fine dinner for this evening. You will be there, won't you? <laughs> Tell Mrs. Cratchit I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you, Mr. Ebenezer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Bob. Oh, I thought he would never leave. Oh. Now, I must start my shopping for Tiny Tim's and the rest of the Cratchit presents. Oh. I just love Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Contractors will be ready to move forward as soon as you give them the go-ahead. The condo project will improve property values from Grand Avenue to the 32nd Street Bridge. That is, unless they're having second thoughts. Second thoughts about what? About the condo project? Are you kidding me? I stand to make a fortune on this deal. Why would I have second thoughts? I just thought that... Maybe the meeting at the dinner bell may have... May have what? Nothing. Look. 
will be doing Miss Dickinson a favor. A favor? The woman has no business sense. Foreclosing on her now will keep her from sinking into further debt. She owes me a thank you. And the bridge club? What about those vagrants? I assume they'll be displaced. We can only hope. Where will they go? I don't care. Besides, the city should give me a beautification plaque for decreasing the surplus population. If there's nothing else. No. Go do whatever it is you do. And tell the contractor to be ready to move as soon as we foreclose on the dinner bell and the rest of that neighborhood of make-believe. Ronald. Don't get soft on me. No, sir. Remember, survival of the fittest. There is no room for the weak. And you kept that for what reason? <laughs> it's not very polite to sneak up on people. Who's sneaking? So I see you haven't quite gotten over Mr. Tall, dark, and obnoxious. I have no clue what you're talking about. <sighs> Opposites attract. You're kind, sweet, and innocent. He's rude, sour, and arrogant. It's just natural you should be in love. I told you, it's not like that. It's just... It's just what? Nothing. It's, it's all in the past. Hola. Take a seat anywhere. I'll be right with you. Honey, like my grandmother always used to say, por el otro lado tienes dedos diferentes. Meaning? On the other hand, you have different fingers. What? I don't know. My grandmother was muy loca. Matthew, isn't your lawyer's intervention group meeting in the park? Cancelled. We were getting no place fast. Great. Everybody's a comedian. Oh! 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 I... I beg your pardon for the... Mess! Y yes Welcome to Dinner Bell. Ah. Well, it is indeed an honor for me to have stumbled into this fine establishment. Whatever. Do you want something to drink? Ah, yes. I would be most thankful for a spot of tea. A spot it is. You're speech is most peculiar. Look who's talking. Uh, is there something else? Well... Okay, uh, what is it? You see, I... It is just the... I am a bit disoriented. No kidding. My... You tell me today's date? The date? Yes, if you please. It's the 11th. The 11th? Yes, of course. <laughs> the 11th of... Feliz Navidad. December. December. The 11th of December. I should have known. What is the matter with me? <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh, w one more question. Pray tell, in what year do we find ourselves? The year? Excuse me. But of course. 
Cinco años trabajando aquí, cuatro meses que no me pagan y tengo que calarme ese viejo. Bien bello. It's one of your customers. Huh? And it is his pot of tea. Welcome to the dinner bell. I'm Belle. Ah, an honor to make your acquaintance. I am Ebenezer. Hmm. Nice costume, Ebenezer. Are you in a play or something? A play? Perhaps that is it. Alas, all the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. Shakespeare. Yes! You know his work. Oh, by heart! I'll let you in on a secret. I've always wanted to be an actress. Oh. <laughs> but, um, alas, this is my stage. <laughs> so, what's your story? My story? Whatever do you mean? Everyone who finds their way into the dinner bell has a story. And I have a feeling you have a humdinger. A humbugger? All right, I'll play along. Sir, to what do I owe the honor of your presence at my eatery? Pray tell. Ah. Oh, well, to begin with, this has been a most distressing day. I awoke this day after suffering from a most unpleasant dream, a nightmare, really. And then I made my way to my place of commerce, at which time I surprised my long-serving clerk by making him a partner in the firm. You should have seen his face. And then I left to do some Christmas shopping. Only to find myself here. You don't say. Yes. Yes, indeed. Belle, might you answer me an inquiry? I might. Where am I? You're in New Britain, sir. New Britain? New Britain, Wisconsin. Um, United States of America? The colonies. Oh. I had heard life was strange in America, but I had no idea. You should see L.A. L.A.? The movies? Oh, never mind. Belle, might you tell me in what year we find ourselves? Uh, it's 2013. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, oh, they have done it to me again. Who's done it? The spirits. Just how many have you had today? I am unsure. Last time it was three, four, if you count Marley. Marley? Is that a whiskey? No, no, my former business partner in the firm of Scrooge and Marley. Scrooge and Marley? Oh, you mean Scrooge and Cratchit. Yes, yes. Scrooge and Cratchit, you know of us. Oh, all too well. Your partner was just here earlier. Bob, Bob Cratchit was here. What a fine fellow to come all this way to search for me. No, not Bob, Timothy Cratchit. Tiny Tim, I, I, I do not understand. I'm beginning to. You were sent here to spy on me. Oh, I beg your pardon. Tim sent you here to make a fool of a poor girl in her pathetic diner. I assure you, I have no idea of what you are speaking. This is what I'm speaking of. It's from the firm of Scrooge and Cratchit Financial. No, there must be some mistake. Oh, you can tell Mr. Timothy Cratchit that I will have the money by the end of the month. He does not need to send you around here with your top hat and your phony accent and manners to harass me. I assure... We're closed, Mr. Scrooge. You... Mom. 
Excuse me, sir. How can I help you? Might you be so kind as to direct me to the offices of Scrooge and Cratchit Financial? Why? Of that I am unsure. But you feel compelled to go nonetheless. That I do. It's a long way. Sir, traveling long distances appears to be my forte. You'll find Scrooge and Cratchit on the corner of State and Grand. Once outside the diner, turn left. Keep going until you get to Grand. Turn right and just keep walking until you're there. Huh. I thank you, sir. You're welcome. Christmas. Ho, 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 merry, etc. Merry, merry, quite contrary. Greetings, spirit of Christmas presents. Spirit of Christmas presents, huh? It's a new one. It's a little materialistic, but I think I can work with it. I knew at once upon arrival and this strange and troubling place that you were responsible. Look, Harry Poppins, I have never seen you before in my life. Surely you have. It was Christmas Eve. Uh, one, one hundred and uh, seventy years ago. Hundred and seventy years, huh? Give or take. I've really got to get back to work. This bell is not going to ring itself anymore. Ho ho! Uh, ho ho ho! Don't ho. you remember me, spirit? Oh, of course you don't remember. I knew your brother Christmas present when it was Christmas present then. Now it is Christmas present now, and he has departed, and you are Christmas present. So, greetings, spirit of Christmas present. Greetings. You know, you've really got to lay off that eggnog. And I've really got to find a new corner. Ho ho! Ho ho ho! What do you want? I am here to know you better, man. Oh, dude, you better step off. I'm about to drop a couple lumps of coal right on your head. You know what I'm saying here? Now get lost, buddy. Exactly. I am lost. But I am not Buddy. I am Ebenezer Scrooge. Fine, fine. You're old geezer Scrooge. I'm Father Christmas. How about you just tell me what you want? Well, actually, I am looking for state and grand. That's great. <laughs> Taxi! Come on, old geezer. I, I, I need to speak to Timothy Cratchit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save it for the sanitarium. Now, this man, this nice man, is the spirit of Christmas beauty. Now, he's going to take you wherever you want to go. Hey, get in and let's get going, buddy. 
Why does everyone insist on calling me Buddy? Just get in! Spirit, where is the horse for this carriage? Spirits don't need no stinking horses. Stay in Grand, and hurry. And whatever you do, don't bring this guy back. Spirit, I do not think this is such a good idea. That guy's tree is short a couple of ornaments. Ho, ho, ho! This is the third month in a row that Saunders has missed his sales call. Yes, but there's a good reason. Good reason? Good reason to fire him. But, Mr. Crack. But what? It's Christmas and all. The gift wrap is notice. Saunders. Excuse me. There are no excuses. Just wait right there. I'll see what I can do. Ronald? What's next? There is the matter of the firm's annual charitable gift to the uh, New Britain Crossroads Youth Center. Yes, one of the charitable endeavors established by my predecessors. Your grandfather, I believe. Yeah. Timothy Cratchit IV. One in a long line of bleeding hearts. Yet it's my blood their foolish generosity continues to drain. Yes, well, the gift does provide some very positive and uh, needed PR. Extortion. That's what it is. Tell me, what's the current rent we charge the youth center? Eighteen hundred dollars a month. Raise it a thousand dollars. A thousand? It may not stop the bleeding completely, but it will be a nice band-aid. Wouldn't that be unethical? Unethical? Don't pull that thread, Ronald. Our entire universe may unravel. If there's nothing else. What's that? Uh, the, the, the heating events. Actually, there is something. What? There's a man who's been waiting to see you for several hours. Does he have an appointment? Not exactly. Then have him make one. He's quite insistent. He says he knows you. Don't they all? He did say meeting with you could be quite profitable for you. Send him in. Right this way. Uh, Mr. Cratchit, a Mr. Scrooge to see you? A Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge? You're not Tiny Tim. Ronald, shut the door behind you. Okay, so I'm to understand. If you understand or not makes little difference. For either way, I am Ebenezer Scrooge. When were you born? 7 February, 1786. And where were the original offices of Scrooge and Cratchit? In Her Majesty's Realm, London, England, on Cornhill Street. Majesty. Elizabeth? <laughs> Victoria! When did you die? I do not know. 
apparently it has not yet happened. Well, according to the company record. Uh, please, Mr. Cratchit. There are some things that are better left unknown. It says here that you had a business partner prior to Robert Cratchit. Yes. I was the partner in business with Jacob Marley. Yes. Oh, he died 24 December 1836. So he did. You do not believe I am who I say I am, do you? What, you? Uh -huh. I have to admit, it would be difficult. Uh, tell me, Mr. Cratchit, uh, when did the firm move to America? It's Tim the Third. 1946, after the war. War? The war, the Second World War. Whew. That is much of history that is new to me. You see, my yesterday was 23 December, 1844. Oh, Tiny Tim, older. And not quite so tiny, but I would recognize him anywhere. Excuse me? Your, your great, great, great grandfather. Oh, a remarkable person. A joy and a pleasure to be around. <laughs> and you, his descendant, who would have thought? What was that? It was nothing. So, Ebenezer, tell me, what brings you here to New Britain? <sighs> if only I knew. This is not my time, nor my place. But it is where I find myself to be. And I have resolved to make the best of it. For whatever reason. So what does this have to do with me? I fear much. I don't have time for this. A more accurate truth you may never have spoken. For time is short. Look. Generations hang before you as a testimony to the shortness of time. All right, Mr. Scrooge, give me one reason why I shouldn't have you thrown out of this office. Tis the season of Christmas. All right, then. I am going. I know what I'm not wanted to yeah. oh, Mr. Cratchit says stay out. What the vibe? But the troubles of this world weigh on my soul, and the heartache in the darkness to me to the bone when it seems that I. I'm lost like a ship without a sea. When it feels I'm all alone and every friend is deserted me, say a prayer for me when I'm lost or down or weak. When my silence knows. I'm wandering lost, losing my hope When I drown in my sorrow, losing my way I find I'm too blind to see I just stop and say a prayer for me
When the truth All the answers Are all so hard to find And I keep hurting myself Forgetting all the time Wanna make it harder Than it has to be When I go it on alone And my faith has deserted me Say a prayer for me When I'm lost or down or weak When my silence knows That I'm wandering lost Losing control When I drown in my sorrow Getting away Where I find I'm too blind to see I just stop And say a prayer for me I can heal it, sir Seek and you find If only you I just stop and say a prayer for me. Do you have a reservation? I beg your pardon, sir. You're sitting in my room. Oh, I, I apologize. Uh, that's all right. Stay put. Looks like there's plenty of other vacancies tonight. You were in the dining establishment early this day, were you not? Dining establishment? Oh, you mean Bell's? Yes, I was. You're not from around here, are you? No, I, uh, I am new to this world. Here. Compliments of room service. I thank you. May I? Oh, please. I'm Matthew. A pleasure, Matthew. I'm Ebenezer. Your health. And to yours, Ebenezer. Too bad about Bell's Diner. How she can't make the uh, mortgage payment and all. Yes, it is very sad. Hmm. So, did you find Scrooge and Cratchit Financial? Oh, yes, yes. The spirit of Christmas present put me in a horseless carriage and I was delivered post haste by the spirit of Christmas beauty. Oh, okay then. And how did your meeting go with Mr. Cratchit? Not well. Hmm. I see. A most disagreeable being. A lost soul? He reminds me of someone I used to know. Someone I knew very well. What happened to that person? It is yet unresolved. Well, maybe the same is true with Mr. Timothy Cratchit. Maybe his future, too, is unresolved. It would be a shame to give up on him. Here you go, Ebenezer. Oh, I, I cannot take that. Oh, I insist. Besides, it comes with a bench. I am obliged. <laughs> I'm here to serve. How about you?
Good night, Ebenezer. Good night, Matthew. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or shadows of things that only may be? Come back, Jacob. Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> I'll spray you! Oh. Well. What are you doing here? I was sleeping. How did you find me? A little bird told me. Really? How is that possible? Actually, I wanted to find you. For what purpose? This... this is the payment for my tea. Do you know how much that is worth? A crown! Try two thousand dollars. Pounds. Oh, that is ridiculous! That's not what eBay says. I should like to have a talk with this Mr. eBay. It is preposterous for him to have you believe such a... Th two thousand pounds? You could purchase the London Bridge for that sum. You must be freezing. Tr true. Oh, what am I doing? Don't just sit there. Come on. Oh, uh, uh, right away. Uh. believe you're from 1844. I know that you take me for a madman, and I really can't blame you. Maybe if we just go through it all again. It is no use. We have spent the entire evening talking about me and my troubles. Tell me about you, Belle. Oh, there's nothing to tell. I've lived here my whole life. In New Britain? In the apartment. The diner and my friend Petra. You met her at the restaurant. Ah, yes, yes. A most charming woman. They're all that I have. Well, that and my faith. Faith? Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Exactly. At the moment, I see a portrait a very lifelike portrait of you and Timothy Cratchit the Sixth. Yes, that was from a long time ago, and I forgot that it was even there. I believe you carried that same portrait when I first met you. Okay. At one time, I thought, well, it doesn't matter what I thought. 
And it's really none of your business, Mr. Scrooge. Hmm. Methinks the lady doth protest too much. Shakespeare, Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 2. What's done is done. Macbeth, also Act 3, Scene 2. True. But if I didn't know better, I'd say you had unfinished business with Timothy Cratchit the Sixth. What do you mean? Uh, your mortgage. What else? There's nothing else. Of course not. I'm going to come up with the money by Christmas, somehow. If it were only possible for me to prove that I am who I am, then perhaps my presence... Yes, of course! How could I have forgotten? Forgotten what? The very beginning of Scrooge and Cratchit Financial. Therefore, let it be known to all that I, Ebenezer Scrooge, do hereby grant Robert Cratchit a full partnership in the firm of Scrooge and Marley. And further let it be known that from this day forward, the firm shall conduct business under the name Scrooge and Cratchit. Signed, Ebenezer Scrooge, the 24th day of December in the year of our Lord, 1844. Mm -hmm. And this looks like it was made yesterday. Actually, it was. <laughs> right, Ebenezer Scrooge. I think it's time for a sit-down. Oh. No, 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 not you. I mean a meeting. A meeting? With whom? Timothy Cratchit the Sixth. Oh, I can assure you that will meet much resistance. Maybe, but this time you're bringing some muscle. And I think you're the same size. Wait here. The same size as what? As my dad. I couldn't bring myself to part with a couple of his favorite soups. Good morning. It's 610 in New Britain. Y yes, yes it is. It's going to be a blustery day with highs only in the 20s. So make sure you dress warm before heading out. I will. Uh, thank you. And now, the latest in local news. Which do you like better, the brown or the blue? Uh, Ebenezer? Which one is warmer? Uh, the brown, I guess? Why? Uh, the person at your window is concerned that I dress appropriately for the elements. What are you talking about? And in sports, the pack will face the bears with the lions attacking next Sunday. Bears and lions? We should not leave this flat without sufficient artillery. Oh, for Pete's sake. Is that Pete? It's just a television. Where did Pete go? Now we're going with the brown. You can still smell his favorite cologne. You loved your father. Very much. He was a good man. He must have been. He raised a fine daughter. Well, all right. Well, we have a lot of work to do and not enough time. So the next time you show up at Scrooge and Cratchit, Ebenezer Scrooge, you will be a new man. But... Uh, it's time for you to go to school, Mr. Scrooge. But what about the bears and lions? Oh, the pack will take care of it. Uh, now get dressed. Pack of what? Okay, so I'm calling you, and then you'll answer the phone after it rings. Next. Ah, it, it move. It, it, what? Uh, what, I, I put the press here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, press, press. Hello? Hi, Ev. Uh, <laughs> how did you get in there? Enterprise, uh, a company or a business? Correct. Ah. <laughs> Net yield. Net yield. Profit? Uh, the profit of a company after taxes. Right. Ah. Thank you. Okay, your turn. A medium dark roast organic, two shot skinny vanilla macchiato to go. What did you order? Madam, I have no idea. You're hanging out at a social event where there is food being consumed. I'm grilling and chilling. <laughs> Good. Um, you just made a mistake. So what do you say? My bad. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, I show you my very cool Christmas presents. 
Nice swag. <laughs> now you're talking. I'm stoked. <laughs> and here, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. ¿Cómo está usted? Oh, muy bien. Ah, es un placer conocerle. Oh, perfecto. Me gusta tomar el té en el comedor de Bell. <ríe> Grandioso. Gracias. <ríe> so, what do you think? The hair looks great. Uh, the outfit... Mm. Oh, Eb, do you still have that coin? Hmm. Uh, of course. Let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. You look nice in this new suit. Oh, thank you. Okay, come on. No! Go. Thank you, never again. I'm an excellent driver. Yeah, yeah. Come with me. Where are we going? Are you ready? Lock and load. <laughs> well, Ronald? Well, as you know, I minored in document recognition and authentication during my undergraduate studies at Princeton. Hiring a nerd finally pays off. Fascinating. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> the document? It's authentic. That's impossible. It appears Mr. Scrooge is entitled to a half interest in the firm of Scrooge and Cratchit Financial. Partner! Look, I don't know what the two of you are trying here, but I assure you I will get to the bottom of this. You will not succeed in blackmailing me or this company. Tim, you fear the world too much. Perhaps, Belle, you don't fear it enough. Mr. Cratchit. What? May I speak with you for a minute? Excuse us. What is it? If we go public with this now, it'll create a lot of negative publicity for the company prior to Christmas. So what? It could significantly impact fourth quarter profits. What are you suggesting? Play along, for now. You know the old saying, keep your friends close and... Send your enemies closer. All right. I'll play their little game. But I want you to personally investigate Bell Dickinson and Mr. Scrooge, or whoever he is. I want to know everything. When this is over, they'll be spending eternity in chains. You got it? Yes, sir. It appears, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, Ebenezer. Mr. Scrooge, that you're stuck with me. For now. Welcome aboard. Yeah. I'll prepare the necessary paperwork to get you started. Oh, and the uh, physical for all new executives. What physical? The blood test and mandatory physical. Yes, the physical. Uh, right, I'll set that up with the staff doctor. Today. Today it is. I am fit as a fiddle. A 200-year-old uh, Stradivarius, that is. Uh, tell us, Mr. Scrooge, what agenda do you plan on implementing here? <clears throat> well, for starters, it is my belief that a company that can aggregate will, at some 
indefinite point of time in the future be able to leverage correctly. Meaning? We need to revalue our capability to syndicate without lessening our aptitude to revolutionize. I'm out of here. In other words, we need to implement some good, old-fashioned fun. I think you'll find that fun is a commodity in short supply here. I thought so. <laughs> I have learned how to catapult agitated birds and disgruntled swine who have taken it upon themselves to steal the fowl's eggs. Most entertaining. <laughs> oh. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. Michael, how's the family? Very good, Mr. Scrooge. And how's your health, sir? Excellent. Michael has wonderful diction. Oh, Maria, ¿se siente mejor? Mucho mejor, señor. Yeah. yeah, Officer Bill. Scrooge! As this chart indicates, Mr. Tilden. As this chart indicates, Mr. Tilden, your profits will far surpass the initial investment. So sorry. So that's your plan for strategic growth? Well. If we reduce interest payments, it will provide a positive reaction in the financial community, thereby raising your company's bottom line. Excellent idea, Scrooge. Spot on. Well, Mr. Tilden, why don't you and I go carve out the details in my office? Later, Cratchit. What say you and I catch some lunch? Excellent idea, Mr. Tilden. It's Sam. Oh, perhaps Sam. We will find an establishment serving a bowl of smoking bishop. You never know. <laughs> you could learn a thing or two from him, Cratchit. I think we got us a deal. Scrooge and Cratchit Financial, not only for this generous, generous gift, but also for news that the annual rent on the New Britain Crossroads Youth Center has been lowered by $1,000 a month. We, we are most happy to do so. Aren't we, Timothy? Yeah, of course. Here's the mock-up of the new advertising campaign featuring Mr. Scrooge. Good night, Mr. Cratchit. So remember, New Britain, if you are in need of help and don't know where to turn, come and see your old Uncle Scrooge. Por lo tanto, recuerde Nueva Britana. Si ustedes necesitan ayuda y no saben a quién acudir, vengan a ver a su viejo tío Scrooge. En el Scrooge y Cratchit Financiera, preocupamos sobre ustedes. Hi. Bell. Don't 
Don't worry. I'm alone, like you asked. Good. What do you want? To give you this. The mortgage to the dinner bell. It's all yours. Free and clear. You win. I win? The dinner bell is of little consequence. As long as you hold up your end of the deal. And what would that be? Call off Scrooge, or whoever he is. I want him gone. This little charade has already cost me enough time and money. I have to hand it to you, Bell. I didn't think you had it in you. Deal? No. No deal. You're gonna throw away your home and your business for that crazy old man? It's called loyalty and friendship, Tim. Do you really think you know what you're doing? Not in the least. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, everyone! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Thanks, Santa. You're welcome. I'll see you Christmas Eve. See you Christmas. Happy holidays! Ho, ho, ho! Happy holidays, mister! <gasps> what is going on? Well, this is Christmas. Compliments of Scrooge and Cratchit Financial, the company that cares. How'd you like a Santa sucker? What? That's it. You are getting a lump of coal, buddy. You're definitely on my naughty list. See you again. Man. You all lost your minds! Ronald! Who's responsible for this? I should have known. What is Saunders doing here? Mr. Scrooge hired him back. Thank you for the raise, Mr. Cratchit. Let me hear one more thing and you'll be spending Christmas in the unemployment line! What is this? It is a Christmas tree. Get it out of here. Don't worry. It is artificial. It is made of fire retardant material approved by the Consumer Protection Agency. There are these places called big box stores. They are full of them. All right, give it to me. What is it you require? The company credit card. Give it to me. An amazing device. The more I use it, the more bonus points we receive for free hotel stays. Why are you wearing those clothes? Oh. They put me in a festive yuletide spirit. They're embarrassing. My embarrassment, then, not yours. It's an embarrassment for my company. Enjoy some of these fine refreshments brought in by our friends. They will put you in a more pleasing mood. They are not friends. They are employees. The refreshments will, nonetheless, be sure to make you merry. I can't afford to make myself merry. Ah, yes. Yes. And I suppose you can't afford to make idle people merry. Either. I, I have heard it all before. In fact, I have said it all before. What good has Christmas ever done? 
It's just an excuse for overeating, overdrinking, and overspending. That's all. There are many things at Christmas which provide us good. It is a kind, pleasant, forgiving, and charitable time. There is no other time I know of in the long calendar year when men and women open up their hearts freely and think of others before themselves. After your precious Christmas, all is back to the way it was, having created no lasting good at all. That is where you are wrong, sir. For it is not what I give or do that is important at Christmas, but rather what has been given to me, to all of us. Surely the babe in the manger is cause for celebration. It is a gift which allows Christmas to live within us beyond the 25th of December. A fairy tale for children. A crutch for the weak. A crutch. <laughs> Tiny Tim once told me that there comes a time in life when everyone needs a crutch. One of the many pearls of wisdom spoken by, lived by, and passed down by the great Cratchit dynasty. You would be well to heed your ancestors' counsel, Timothy. I have no ancestors. What do you mean? I'm not a Cratchit. <laughs> you are? I'm an orphan. I was abandoned. I don't know who I am. You are Timothy Cratchit the Sixth. You are not an orphan. As I, you are an adopted child, not of man, but of God through Jesus Christ, to live according to his purpose and will in your life. I don't want you or anyone else, living or dead, to tell me how to live my life. You don't know me. No one does. So I ask you, for the last time, leave me alone. Well, if that is nothing else, I will take my leave. You know, you're not real either, Ebenezer. You said yourself, this is not my time nor my place. You're a freak. Good day, sir. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, June 6, 1870, the day you die. Get back to work. say. It's as though up until he showed up in New Britain, he didn't exist. That's your report? That's all? No, not all. The results are back from the blood test that we gave Scrooge uh, during his physical. The DNA test run against a sample of the original Mr. Scrooge, found on artifacts in the corporate vault, show an exact match. So he's really Ebenezer? <laughs> I know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Isn't it enough they haunt me from those portraits on my wall? There is something I fear you should know. What? It's about Belle. Don't tell me she's Mother Teresa.
can't be. Where are you going? To help a friend pack. The restaurant's closing. You know, it's remarkable how some people have the power to make others happy or unhappy. To make an individual service light or a burden. A joy or an unbearable suffering. What's even more remarkable is that this person's power comes from a look or, or a word. <sighs> Are things so subtle and insignificant that you can't count them like you would money? But the happiness given is as great as if it cost a fortune. Oh well. For a brief moment, Scrooge and Cratchit was the company that cares, not scares. Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. Dear friends, once more, or close the wall up with our British dead! <laughs> but when the blast of war flows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger! Set the teeth and stretch the nostrils wide! Hold hard the breath and bend each spirit to his full height. In these parts, from morn till even fought. And you, good human, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture that you are worthy of your breathing, which I doubt not. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge cry, God for Harry, England, and St. George. <laughs> Henry V, Act Three, Scene One. No, you're dead! And this surprises you? How? What do you want? Ah, uh, let's see. You. Why me? Let's just say that we have much in common, both in your world and in mine.
No. I can change. I can change! Are you all right? I don't know. This, this car just came out of nowhere. It just... Ebenezer. Yes, it is I. Are you hurt? Oh, it will take more than a runaway, horseless carriage to dislodge Ebenezer Scrooge. But why? Well, I have managed to survive 200 years. No, 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 no. Why did you save me? Why wouldn't I? Well, for starters, I've been rude and condescending and, and conceited and... And? Arrogant, pompous and disdainful, yes. Quite so. But you are family. I don't deserve to be helped. Exactly, none of us do. But help is ours, nonetheless. By Jove, I think you've got it. Jacob Marley? No, Matthew. Why don't we step into my office? You're not homeless, you're a pastor. My ministry is rather unique in that I don't spend much time here. This congregation called me to be in the streets rather than the pulpit, under a bridge rather than in front of an altar. And thanks to Bell, at a table in a diner rather than in a pew. So Bell's been helping you this whole time? Oh, yeah. She loves people. She loves the Lord. Yeah, but... Belle's the one that needs help. Well, maybe there's a bell like person out there for her. Besides, who better to help Belle than her loving Father in Heaven through the most glorious gift ever given, Jesus, His Son. I'm, I'm so confused. I... Welcome to the club. There's an awful lot of uncertainty out there. You're telling me. In here, I'm reminded of the one that never changes. The one that's always certain. God. He's the one that's always there for us. No matter who we are, what we do, where we go, or for that matter, what year it is. Huh, Ebenezer? <laughs> With what I get in here, I know I can always face what may come out there. So, do you think that it's too late for me? You're here, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, then it's not too late. Speaking of late, I have a moving party I have to get to. Are you too? <laughs> Are you coming, Tim? I, I don't know. Tim, what is it? There's something about Belle you should know. Well, boss, this isn't exactly what I wanted for Christmas. Me either, Petra. There's just so many memories here. I don't really know any other home. There has to be something we can do. There is. Pray. Uh, Belle? 
What should I do with this box? Tilly, I have a Christmas present for you. Jeez, for me? It's all yours. <sighs> Thank you, Belle. You're welcome. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ah, a little weak on the Christmas spirit, are we? Where have you been? I needed to attend to business. On Christmas Eve? Mr. Scrooge, please tell me you haven't returned back to your old ways. I had a sit down with a couple of friends. Who? Matthew and, come along. Tim. El Diablo. What do you want now? Only what's mine. Over my dead body. Look, she has until midnight to make the payment. True. So, how's it going? That's what I thought. Look, Belle, I told you, I'll loan you the money. Thanks, Ronald. But it's of no use. Excuse me. It's all yours. Lock, stock, and barrel. I can't accept this. Why not? Because at a hastily called meeting of the loan committee... In a taxi on the way here. The mortgage on your diner was forgiven. Tim, I told you, I'm not cutting any more deals. No, no deals. See? It's all yours. What are you up to? I would also like Pastor Matthew to accept this gift to support his ministry with the Bridge Club. I don't know what to say. Thank you. This is the first of many, I assure you. Thank you. I apologize for crashing your party, but there is something here that belongs to me. Here it comes, like a snake in the grass. Zzz. I've come here to claim my family, my sister. You know? Better late than never. Belle, why didn't you tell me? Would it have changed anything? The way I was, probably not. Belle, you were right. I do fear the world too much. I've always felt alone. All my hopes and my dreams turned into this nightmare that it became this desire to not want to lose to anyone or anything. And in my quest to win, I lost everything. Well, everything that's important. You didn't lose me, brother. Hold on. Brother and sister? En realidad, Belle y Tim son gemelos. Twins? They're twins? And who's her father? Darth Vader? Who? Oh. No. Will you forgive me? Yes, of course. Can you all forgive me? Ah, oh, why not? Merry Christmas, Cratchit. What is this, Limburger? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I promise you that Scrooge, Cratchit, and Dickinson will not let you down. Uh, Dickinson? Wait, 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 wait just a minute. Let me understand this. So the reason you had feelings for him, it's because he was your brother. You didn't love him. You love him, but you didn't love him. So that means that Mr. Tall, apparently nice and handsome, is available. You are, aren't you? 
far as I know. Soy Petra. Salgo a las seis. Pasa por mí. Suena bien. Gracias. Wait, 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 wait. Tim, I have no clue how to run a corporation. Well, as you see, neither do I. But we will sink or swim together. <laughs> Partner? Partner. It's going to be a little cramped in my office with you, me, and Ebenezer <laughs> around that little table, but... Um, uh, Ebenezer? Where'd he go? You are. Well, <laughs> if it isn't the woolmates. Why did you go? The party was just getting started. My time is short. Why? He's leaving. Is that true? There was a time when I could not wait to depart this place. But now, it is difficult. Ebenezer, 50 times, thank you. I assure you, I am not the man I was. I am glad for that. Though you did remind me of me. Thankfully, God did not give up on either of us. Ah, sweet, lovely Belle. You know, I once knew another beautiful young woman named Belle. What happened to her? Sadly, I do not know. But I think I would like to find out. Oh, and Belle, I would like you to have this. A key? What is it open? The past, the present, and the future. Goodbye, Ebenezer. Fare thee well. Goodbye. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle. I like that. <laughs> when shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. Macbeth, act one. Scene one. Ah! He, he fell, fell off the, the balcony. balcony! I pumped you! Merry Christmas! And God bless us. Everyone. <laughs> that I will say good night till it be morrow. Romeo good evening, and Governor. Oh, good evening, lad. Is everything all right, sir? Yes. Yes. Everything is just as it should be. Lad, might I inquire of you the day? Why, it's Christmas Eve, sir. Oh, <laughs> I haven't missed it. What's that? Oh, well, this is. Just a toy. I've never seen anything like it. Well then, it is yours. Mine? Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. And your name is? Gates. William Gates, Governor. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Billy. Merry Christmas. Gates. No. No way. <laughs> oh, Happy New Year's Eve, 
victim. You're late. I had to stop at the dinner bell to get signatures. I just turned over half ownership of the diner to Petra. I'm sure Petra will find you an excellent business partner, just as I have. Oh, thanks, little brother. Little brother? Uh, I am 12 minutes older. Oh, what's this? Ronald brought it up from the archives. The inscription says to be opened by TC and BD on the eve of the new year. Yes. Ebenezer Scrooge. Well, let's see what's inside. I've been dying to find out. It's locked. Oh, well, wait. Try this. half the business. You're half. <sighs> Tiny, Tiny Tim's, Tim's crutch. crutch. My dearest heirs, it is my most fervent prayer that Tiny Tim's, Tim's crutch serves to remind you, as it has me, that at times everyone is in need of a crutch. May you be blessed to be provided with many opportunities to be the crutch to those your shadow falls upon. And may they, and you, find a true wealth and peace in the unchanging message given to us by the most wonderful crutch of all. Jesus, who was born in a stable, died on a cross, and is the reason we can be sure of what we have today, tomorrow, and for eternity. Whether we be rich or poor, strong or weak, or our lives be long or short, my prayer is that our days be in service to the one who does not change or disappoint. The one who is, who was, and who will ever be. Merry Christmases and Happy New Year's to you both. Until we meet again, your loving uncle, Ebenezer. Well, Belle, looks like we have our orders. And our how-to manual. <laughs> oh wait, there's more. Postscript, don't just stand there, giddy up. <laughs> Christmas in my own home. For a change. Molly? What are you doing here? I have no idea. I was on the treadmill in the company gym, and the next thing I know, I'm here. Well, get inside before someone sees you. Molly? The end? Mm -hmm.